Right, so you're probably watching this because you want to know if getting a degree will really make you rich. Or maybe not rich, but allow you to be well off. And you've probably heard that computer science, engineering, law, all of these degrees will help you to achieve great financial success in your future. But is that so? Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about career, university and lifestyle. Yes, we are delving into quite an interesting topic, which is what degree will actually make you rich. And I'm talking as someone who studied computer science and who is now actually jumping into law. And as many students do, I've personally checked what the starting salaries for different professions are, just so that I can take that into consideration when deciding what type of job I want to do. So if that sounds interesting to you, you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you're new so that you can watch more content like this and leave a comment down below. That really helps this channel out. And we're nearly at a thousand subscribers. So if you could hit that that subscribe button that would be great but anyways let's get straight into the video and let's really delve into this question so just to let you know all of the facts and figures that I talk about in this video I'm going to put the links to the articles slash websites that I found them in the description but as someone who studied computer science one thing that I would typically hear when I would tell people that I studied computer science is that IT technology computer science that's where all the money is at and that the whole world is shifting to technology which is somewhat true but it's computer science where all the money is at. So I did a bit of digging because previously when I've checked starting salaries for different professions, in the UK by the way, I don't really see software engineering jobs or computer science tech roles as being listed as one of the top earning professions for graduates. And that's not to say that if you are a software engineer in the UK, you won't be earning a lot of money. It's just that most student resources that talk about graduate salaries don't typically list a computer science profession as being up there in terms of starting salaries for graduates. So I did a bit of digging and I came across this article from this website called Study in UK and it talks about the average starting salary for computer science graduates in the UK and one line that stood out to me was the following. The average computer science graduate starting salary in the UK is £44,143. It then goes on to say that graduates from Imperial College London earn the highest computer science salary in the UK which were up to £50,000 after six months after graduation. So from a salary perspective, where does this actually put computer science roles in the wider spectrum of starting salaries for different professions? And just to let you know, if you have a salary of £44,000 or around £44,000, you're most likely taking just under £2,800 a month. So now that we know what the average computer science starting salary for graduates is, there was one thing that I was a little bit confused about because this is the first article talking about UK computer science graduates that I've seen that actually labels the average starting salary as £44,000 because what I typically see and what I'll show you later on is that many of the average IT starting salaries is actually nowhere near £44,000. I've actually seen quite varied results when I've tried to search for the answer to this question. Typically I've seen figures around £25,000 to £32,000. So I guess there is some variation to consider. And also it's important to remember that computer science is quite a large field. And if you study a computer science degree, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be a software engineer. You could perhaps work in cybersecurity, or you could work as a tech consultant, or you could work as an app designer, a web designer. There are so many professions in the technology field that you can take. And that probably has an effect on the starting salary that you see across many different websites. But for this video, I'm going to go with that article since it was written the same year that this video is being made, which is 2022. And let's say that the average starting salary for computer science graduates is around £40,000. It is still worth checking what the starting salary for your desired tech profession is because it might not be £40,000 or £44,000. It might be a bit less, it might be a bit more. But as an average, let's use that for this video. So now let's look at another very popular profession that is typically associated, I don't even know about typically, maybe always associated with great salaries. And that is investment banking. So one thing that I've come to understand is that people who work 
in investment banking, i.e. the investment banking division of a bank, typically earn the most money because they are front house and revenue generators. And investment banking, as opposed to asset management or corporate finance or any of the other divisions in a bank, is typically associated with crazy working hours as well. But I've always had this view that if you want to have the highest possible graduate starting salary in the UK, then your best bet is to go into investment banking. And I was actually reading this really interesting article about Goldman Sachs, which talks about their starting salary. And if you know of a starting salary that is higher, then please do leave it in the comments below because we're all trying to learn, we're all trying to educate ourselves and we're all trying to pick the best professions for ourselves as well. But the article that I was reading was actually written in 2021 and was published by the Guardian newspaper. It was talking about the 100 hour work week that many junior bankers that were working in Goldman Sachs were complaining about. And the article goes on to say that previously, first year analysts, so these would be people who have just graduated from university and are going straight into work, they were earning about £50,000 in base pay. And you need to remember that if you work in a bank, you are most likely going to receive a bonus. And bonuses can be huge. But it seems as though after these complaints, or at least according to what the Guardian newspaper has written, after these complaints were made, Goldman Sachs increased increased the first year analyst salary to £79,000, which is about $110,000. I do realise though that some of these figures will have changed slightly because of inflation and because of the exchange rate between pounds to US dollars. But this is a very high starting salary in the UK, considering that the average graduate salary is about £30,000. And to add to this, this is only the base pay for first year analysts at Goldman Sachs. This doesn't include bonuses. So this is why I believe that if you want to earn the most amount of money possible as a graduate in the UK, your best bet is to go into investment banking. But then I was thinking to myself, let's delve into the world of commercial law, which as some of you may know, is the world that I am God willing going to enter quite soon. So I was actually reading another article. Yes, another article. <laughs> Um, by Aisha Hussein, titled Law Ties with Investment Banking in Graduate Salary Rankings. Now, I must mention, as I've just talked about graduate salaries in investment banking, that the average graduate salary for these professions seems to vary from website to article, I guess because it is quite hard to determine for sure what a first year analyst salary or a recent graduate salary is at different institutions. And that's mainly because people don't typically share that information. Just, just a quick side note, the only profession that seems to publicly display their starting salaries is law, commercial law specifically. And as far as I'm concerned, for most law firms, certainly for the Magic Circle law firms, you can easily find what the trainee salaries and newly qualified associate salaries are just from their website or you could go on legal cheek which is actually where this next article is from so this article actually talks about how graduates entering law or investment banking are the highest paid in the country and that people entering these professions can expect a starting salary of around £50,000. So then this article actually goes on to talk about the median salary as opposed to the mean salary. So quick maths lesson, the mean is calculated by adding up how many elements there are in a list and then dividing that total by the number of elements in the list and then the median is calculated by finding the middle value in a list. So again this would impact what the average salary salary that you see on an article or a website. And even if you type in mean average salary UK versus median average salary in the UK, you'll get different results. So you need to keep that in mind as well. There are many things that you need to keep in mind with this whole salary thing. But the article goes on to talk about how the median starting salary in law is £50,000 and this is matched by investment banking at £50,000 as well. It then goes on to talk about consulting, have a median starting salary of £47,500 and then oil and energy £40,000 and so on. So from a median starting salary perspective, commercial law and investment banking seem to be right at the top. And if you do a simple search on Google and you come across legal cheek, you can see what the starting salaries for different law firms are. That is the starting 
salaries for trainee solicitors. So yeah, these are what some of the graduate salaries for different professions are. So where does that leave you? Well, I personally don't think that you should be choosing jobs solely based on their salaries. It should be because you enjoy the type of work that you're doing. And obviously having a good salary is a good thing as well, but you should also take into consideration the hours that you're working and what you actually want to do with your life. But yeah, I hope you found this video insightful. So if you could hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment down below. We're nearly at a thousand subscribers. That would be much appreciated. But for now, that's all for this video. So I'll see you guys next time for another video.